Hey there everyone, welcome back to another ICT IGCS video. Today we are going to be looking at the most repeated ICT chapter 4 questions. Let's begin. First of all, we need to know what's the difference between internet and intranet. Okay, so internet is public, whereas internet, intranet is within one organization. Internet is global, but intranet can be policed or managed, or we could have some specific rules to use them. Internet has more information, yes, because it's not policed. Um, data on the intranet is more reliable because the data is policed and relevant to the organization than which on the internet. Then we have one VLAN and LAN. Now we also have MAN, M-A-N, but that's not part of our syllabus. So when you talk about VAN, it stands for Wide Area Network. These are used where computers or networks are situated at long distance. This is the key word. They are situated at long distance from each other geographically. For example, in a different city or a country. If a number of LANs are joined together using a router, they can form a WAN. The most uh, common example of the WAN are the internet and the network of ATMs used by banks. Then we go to VLAN. VLAN is basically a LAN, but it's wireless. Uh, yes, no cable, no wires or cables. In other words, they provide wireless communication over fairly short distances. So when WAN WAN is long distances, VLAN and LAN are short distances. They use radio or infrared signals instead of cables. Now we also they also make use of access point. This is very important for VLAN because this is the access point is how they are going to be transferring the data. Okay, so yes, advantages is that all computers can access the same services and resources, increase flexibility, adding new computers and devices is very easy. Security is an issue of can affect the signal by any problem and the data transfer rate is slow than in a wired LAN. Also, one more advantage for one LAN is that they can be used on the move. So you can be walking and then still be using LAN. Okay. But when you come to LAN, LAN stands for local area network. Okay. It's a network that covers small geographical area, as we said, for example, a building. A typical LAN will consist of a number of computers and devices, for example, printers that are connected together by hubs or switches by cables. Advantages, the same thing, sharing of resources, ease of communication between users, a network administrator to control and monitor all aspects of the network. Disadvantages, easier spread virus to the whole network, printer starts developing fast, sorry, printer fast developing, um, slow access to external network, increased security risk, blah, blah, blah. Okay. We need to know the advantages and disadvantages of video conferencing. Now note that there's a, huh, there's a difference between web conferencing and video conference. Okay. Well, let's, let's look at what we have here. So advantages are they're much easier to access important documents or being experts. It is possible to hold conferences at short times. No traveling cost to meeting reduces cost of traveling, cost of hotel accommodation, cost of transportation, and when delegates need to travel to unsafe places around the world. Disadvantages is that technical problems may affect, with the internet can affect the quality, high setup cost due to the hardware, lack of personnel contact, different time zone could find it, uh, so you won't be able to find a suitable time to have it, and not possible to sign documents. Yeah, it's possible to have, um, what do you say, digital signature and all now it is, but um, it's not, it's still not the same as you signing it in person. So that's video conferencing. Now, web conferencing is simply having a conference by using the internet. The only requirement is a computer and a stable internet connection. It's the same idea of using an application of website, WhatsApp or Facebook, for example, to have a group chat, but of course in a way more formal way because it's a conference. Uh, the following are some of the features of web conferencing. Participants can leave and join the conference whenever they wish. 
sending instant messages is the main way of communication in web conferences because someone is talking and you do not want to interrupt them it's possible to send images or videos using the webcam throughout the conference documents can be shared by uploading them to the website before the conference begins then name hardware devices that would be needed for video conference now you see it's important to read the question over here see how carefully they have said that hardware devices okay so make sure that you only uh, state hardware devices for example the one that they have given here uh, camera screen speakers microphone etc now we need to know the disadvantages and advantages of bluetooth and of wi-fi and i also need to know the difference between them before you can even tell the disadvantage and advantages between them Bluetooth is more useful when transferring data between only two devices, whereas Wi-Fi is most suited for a full-scale network. Bluetooth does not buffer, internet may buffer. The devices connected via Bluetooth should be near to each other, whereas Wi-Fi has a longer range. Less data tends to be transferred with Bluetooth. Bluetooth has a lower bandwidth, example sound data or file transfer. Then uh, Wi-Fi has better security. Bluetooth is cheaper than Wi-Fi, Bluetooth has a shorter password, Bluetooth devices are battery operated which need to be replaced or recharged. Wi-Fi do not use any batteries. To connect to the network, uh, you need a Bluetooth adapter, but Wi-Fi needs a Wi-Fi adapter, a wireless router and a wireless access point. Bluetooth range is approximately 20 meters, whereas Wi-Fi's range is 100 meters. Bluetooth is simple to use and set up, but Wi-Fi is more complex. Bluetooth or Wi-Fi are both wireless, so you can't fall over wires. Save money on cables as they don't require wires, so supporting the idea that was already stated before. Bluetooth is more energy efficient and in some cases 3% of the energy. Okay, so now these are a lot, but you should know at least 8 of them looking at the way the mark scheme is. Encryption. Encryption is the process of converting uh, information into a form that is meaningless to anyone except the holder of a secret key. Or the way I would say is that it is the scrambling of data so that it can only be viewed by the by the person with the key with the decryption key you could also say something like this uh you still get the map explain how uh data from a router is routed now this is very important because this question came in my mock exams as well okay so routers send packets of data between computers on different networks now each this data packet contains ip address of the computer or network where the data is being sent to to send to then the router will use this ip address to work out the best route in which to send the data to its destination the router uses the routing table to find out the best and fastest route with the least least traffic okay the data being the data okay then the next one says the data will be received on other networks which will read the ex which will read the ip address and reroute the data until it ends up with the exact device that it was intended for and that's all for this video i hope you learned something new if you did make sure to like share, and subscribe i'll see you in the next video till then